Giovanni Ferrosi is our guest tonight. He's trying to make headway in this Republican gubernatorial campaign thing. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Look, if you're looking for a candidate that's got new ideas and new conversations, I think you got to look at Ferozzi. I, I think you do. Uh, I think you probably have a lot of questions about what he's talking about. And sometimes I just, uh, sometimes I, I think he might be in the, in, in the space between smartest guy in the room and smartest guy he knows syndrome, uh, meaning smart. But does anybody else get what he's talking about? So we're going to get to some of that stuff uh, right quick tonight. Great to have you in on this Monday evening. I just want to make a clarification because I was wrong about something that I said for the Thursday show last week. We tape our Thursday and Friday shows together, so I don't get a chance on Fridays to regroup from something that may have happened on Thursday. Uh, but when you misspeak, you need to speak correctly. Uh, put this headline up if we can. Thank you. This is about CCRI and some of the numbers there. I had said on Thursday of last week that the new enrollment had doubled based on the Promise program, the free tuition uh, for students at, uh, at CCRI. And I was worried about the infrastructure being able to handle those students. Secondly, I was uh, somewhat concerned about the idea that they had a 43% you know, that they had 43% growth and that they were taking the GPA down. Here's what I've learned about uh, what is true after taking a look at various reports. Come on back to me. I want to look the camera in the eye when I say I made a mistake. Um, it is not double the amount of students. It's a 43% increase in the number of students who fit the formula for that particular financial program. So it's hundreds of students, not thousands. Uh, and the former high capacity of CCRI was 15,000 students. Right now it sits at about 11 or 12,000, right, depending on the semester. And so they have the physical plant capacity for this. They've added faculty uh, to address the, the new students. There is no movement to take the 2.5 GPA requirement for these students down to 2.0, even though the federal government does provide for a 2.0 uh, for their financial assistance, it's 2.5 for the states. That was the move of the General Assembly. Here's the sticky wicket, though. Uh, the number of students new into this program who are in compliance and on pace with the requirements for the two years there is not good. The numbers vary. We're going to get representatives from CCRI in here to talk to us about that this week. But it's important, you know, if I'm going to uh, make a case, to make a case based on the right data. So uh, mea culpa on that. We'll, we'll get to it coming up this week. All right, let's get right into it. Uh, let's uh, pick a couple of uh, contemporary pieces of news on the gubernatorial race, and then we'll talk theories with our candidate. Uh, headline here on tax returns. We always love to talk about the tax returns, the tax returns, the tax returns. Uh, Giovanni Ferrosi says, yeah, when they're ready, uh, which, <laughs> which could be a while, because you've got some financial issues right now. But let me just say this before I formally introduce you. I think this is an issue about nothing. Uh, the idea that somebody doesn't want to offer their tax returns, uh, a la you know, the presidential race, it's a different story, right? Uh, there, are, there are all sorts of disclosures that you can make financially that don't necessarily require tax returns. Um, so I don't know if it's a, it falls in the category of a red herring, but to be honest with you, it's sometimes a lot of uh, fanfare for no good reason. Welcome. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. What is your thought it. on that, by the way? Well, I, I, I think in my own personal situation, everybody knows everything anyway. So um, no, I don't uh, think everybody knows everything. Well, I think uh, you you would, um, you know, for the most part. But uh, the reality is, I think um, you know, yeah, there's some information there. I, I personally think um, you should kind of know. I know that I differ from you on that, but um, well, I think I'm, I, I think I'm financial okay disclosures the, are one thing. I'm not saying you know how your financial net worth. Sure. Uh, I, I, I just think the nuances of tax returns, you know, being the tool, uh, you know, for release, you know, what you paid in federal taxes, what your salaries were, are, I think most people can guess for the most part where based on what you do and what other uh, optional disclosures you make. I'm suggesting if you do it optionally, that's fine. I don't know that it has to be, you know, a tax the, return. The, the big, the, the, I think the, the, well, there could be maybe a way to solve that would be to come up with a form that, uh, you know, your accountant signs off on. Um, I know, for example, when we apply to be you know one of the fastest growing companies in the US or things of that sort 
uh, you list information, yep. and then the CPA has to sign off saying this is factual information. Maybe something along those lines can, can kind of fit the bill. Uh, since we're on it, since you think it's okay to do it, did, did, you, did you file on time this year? Well, no, it's an extention, you know, a business corporate extension. You, you, you got some entanglements right now financially with your Benris lawsuit and all that kind of stuff. Sure, sure. There could be different results uh, that'll that'll take place over the course of the next, you know, however many months till October. And then, um, you know, then you have tax uh, carrybacks and other things that'll happen because I invested in Rhode Island, you know, since 2014. So I took, um, you know, roughly $7 million and put it in the economy in Rhode Island. So you'll you'll carry it over and over and, um, you know, on to the next step. Seven million dollars with the tax deductible investments? Federally, you know, federal carrybacks. I mean, the returns that I had shown um, up and through last year, I think, was um, six and a half that I put into, um, um, you know, into the to various businesses. And I was able to um, have carrybacks of roughly uh, over three million. Um, so remember when it was reported that I owed the federal government three point two million? Mm -hmm. I always said that was nonsense because they would get wiped out, and sure enough, they did up until about uh, maybe two to three hundred thousand that was left, and then the next return would wipe that out. So uh, that's how that works. I know it's a little rough for for people to follow, but the bottom line is when you invest uh, into something and um, you know you have those early losses or those early expenses that you're able to carry forward. All right, for those of you who might be staying in a hotel and don't know Giovanni Ferrosi, <laughs> he's, uh, he's had a, a long history here, and uh, his most recent success, of course, was with Alex Anani, and one of the fastest growing companies in America, uh, left that business uh, under some turmoil. Difference of opinion. The uh, investment in the Benris watch is still, uh, has been messy, uh, big losses, but at this point, um, a story not yet written. Is that what you're trying to yeah, tell absolutely. us? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What yeah. if that all? Uh, what if it all comes to your uh, benefit result, all the litigation, and it you've will. been elected governor? What happens then? Well, it will. I mean, it it will. Remember, I tell people all the time, a one-way street eventually has to turn the other way. So, um, you know, you've you've only heard one side of it, and um, and um, I mean, nothing. It it goes back into you know the. The way it works in a case where something is in uh, the state that it's in is creditors to get taken care of, then legal fees, and then equity holders, of which I'm over 80% of the equity. No, I'm just talking about the business. Do you think, would you, do, do you get elected, are you going to run the business? Well, you know, it depends on what happens with the trademarks. So, if the, you know, different of situations can happen. You can either sell the marks and then the liquidity from that event would go to us, or we would inherit the marks again and then determine if we want to run a going concern. Um, so there's various options, but uh, no, I personally would not be yeah, running. I never thought again. about asking you this question: If Benoist was doing well and you sure. didn't have some of the complications, were you thought about running for governor? Uh, yes, I mean that was uh, the, the the reason why I'm running is frankly because I have a vision for Rhode Island. It's a positive thing, you know. What I do, frankly, for all businesses that I'm involved with, I set the strategy, I set the vision, I um, address what the you know, the cost components should be, both from the retail down to the cost of the business uh, and operating the business, the cost of the products, I should say, and then create marketing and distribution. So all of that's done, and then it's executed by professionals that I would hire or that are recommended to me. So that is always the same. I mean, that's, that's what I do. You know, that's my job. Everyone has their, their profession in life. And so I, uh, I go in on the front end of businesses. Uh, if they're startups or those that want to see a spike in revenue, uh, or those that need uh, some assistance because they've uh, had, you know, really tough times and they want me to right the ship. Mm. So, as you know, Benris was a, um, you know, was a business that was out of business and I was trying to resurrect it. All right. Uh, full disclosure, by the way, anytime we talk about this, uh, I was uh, in business with Benris. Uh, Benris advertised on a couple of my projects and uh, I am not on the creditor list. I was paid and you uh, <laughs> did what he was uh, what, what he committed to do, and I just think it's important for you, to, you, you folks to know that anytime we talk about uh, this business. All right, I want to get into some issues of the day, and then this concept of blockchain, which has, um, I don't know how many people it has talking, but it, it certainly has geo talking, so we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But I want to just remind you that if you have an interest in getting all of your finances in the palm of your hand with the Card Valet app from Navigant Credit Union, you can do that. The sophistication of this app uh, surpasses most in the, uh, in the uh, retail banking 
place. So uh, much more than you'll get online, even though there's some great products online right now with NavigantCU.org. Check out the Card Valley app with Navigant. Right back with Giovanni for us. Stay with us. skeptical that it is possible for them to make a go of it. As I understand it, that um, facility, the hospital there, requires millions and millions of dollars of capital improvements. So, you know, I'm, I'm open to it. We'll see what they put forward. Uh, Governor Raimondo last week on this really complex issue going on with the hospitals here in Rhode Island. You've got Memorial Hospital in Pawtucket that is 90 percent closed, just running an outpatient clinic. Its, uh, its owner, uh, Care New England, is sitting there trying to get a merger done with Partners Healthcare, which is a Boston company with a, you know, huge hospitals there. Charter Care owns Roger Williams and Fatima Hospital and is attempting to make a $10 million, or well, we don't know what the price is. They're saying they'll put $10 million into a new emergency room there. Uh, the politicians in Blackstone Valley want to see this happen. The governor is showing some insecurity about the entire thing. Um, you've had some things to say about this. If you were governor, you'd have to weigh in. What do you think? Well, first of all, I think the communication is paramount. You know, I was shocked to see that they had a, you know, a press conference, and uh, the sellers uh, said they, you know, we're, we're not into this. So it's actually shocking. I, I just couldn't believe that. Yeah, I couldn't figure out what the play was, whether they were um, trying to force the hand or or, or uh, wh Which is, yeah, that's a, it's an odd situation. But um, I looked at more what the facility can actually accomplish someday. So one of the things I had uh, first proposed back in uh, the, the closure time period was to really look at having a discussion with the VA and seeing what we could be able to do in the future, leveraging uh, more of a VA, um, you know, c capable type hospital. So I think the, again, the questions need to be brought in. The discussion as a whole, everything, in my opinion, no matter what area of government, needs to just be re-looked at and not just default to what was there. You know, you need to repurpose both actual projects, entities, capabilities to match what the needs are of the community. And therefore, I think that's where the hospitals um, need to broaden their conversation and then need to understand who the customers are. The customers of the past might not be the customers of the future. They're not going to be. You know, someone, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm big on advocating for plugging into the Boston, you know, centric view. Um, we, we'll be okay with driving 20 miles somewhere. We'll be okay going, you know, different, different areas for our uh, care if it's the right kind of care. So I just hate for something to be turned on just to be turned on. You know, I grew up in a mill town. I've seen the mills go on and off a few times, and I've seen them prosper with the right um, ownership in the right new model. I think there's model. some, there's, there's some uh, I don't know if it's provinciality or whether it's ownership of the right mindset, but the idea is keeping as many medical brains in Rhode Island as possible, and these mergers with Boston might liquidate the, the medical brain power here. You're not, you're not concerned about that? Well, I am concerned about the actual um, number of doctors that are in the state that said, their concerns are beyond something like this. Their concerns are they can't run their practices as they are, as we're, just as a small business. So it's not even just being plugged into the hospital, you know, uh, as a whole. It's that they, the, Rhode Island is um, on the list of, uh, the top of the list of the most expensive places for a doctor to do How business. How do we fix that? And so there, uh, there uh, have been those that have reached out to me and uh, basically said uh, you can start in the licensing area, uh, in the board certification area, uh, things that um, you know would really reduce the amount of time that professionals spend on just getting certified and just trying to run their businesses. I have guys that are saying, "Listen, I, I'll I'll go across the you know across the border and just open my office there, and I don't have to put up with Rhode Island and what it what it does." Is the regular the regulatory gunk in the medical field that much more cumbersome here than it is in Massachusetts? I believe that it, it, it is. I mean, I, I, this is unsolicited advice that uh, hmm. has come my way, right. and uh, there was a recent report actually in the last days. We should follow days. up on that. Let's talk about sure. tolls for a second. Here was the governor uh, the other day as the DOT was celebrating um, their good marks on some bridge construction. He had just ignored the fact that our roads and bridges were some of the worst in the country. 
I think we were 50 out of 50. For 96 percent of the projects were done on time and nearly 100 percent were done on budget. So far, which is, you know, fine news, but lingering, looming over all of this is the tolls right. uh, for trucks only right now. Uh, there are two gantries that are now erected in South County on 95, six months late each of them, well, mm -hmm. more than six months late actually. Uh, no real game plan for the rest of the projected 14 to 17 gantries. Uh, a lawsuit that is pending may come quicker than we think based on uh, some latest info that I'm getting. Uh, but what's your take on, on the DOT's reluctance to throw away a toll program that seems to be irrelevant to the total financing scope, I think. So this is one of the areas that I really am, you know, creating separation. Uh, my experience, as you know, I always tout, has to do with more of the level I've played at than, you know, what we're really dealing with. And so this to me is, again, it's, uh, it's discussing the right financial instruments to take care of, a, of an issue. Uh, I believe it was your show I was listening to that was saying, you know, the delays, the delays, the delays are going to cause a structural impact on what you're saying is going to actually solve the problem. And so I deal with this on a daily basis. I, uh, you know, advise four companies right now, you know, overlaying what a cash flow uh, needs to look like for them to get to where their vision is going to be. And whenever you're, you're, you're putting those kinds of planning budgetary items together, you have to put a balance sheet on the, on the table, a cash flow statement on the table that makes sense. And so if the funding for all these, uh, you know, fixing of the roads and bridges uh, were in fact to come from tolls, but yet you haven't implemented the tolls or you're delaying them for whatever reasons, uh, it doesn't make sense, right? Are you aware of but, what the toll's impact is supposed to be on this budget? You know, I uh, don't know the exact numbers on that. Take but, a guess. Um, I, I, I don't want to guess on numbers. Well, but, this is something um, you got to know. Yeah, you run it for yeah, governor. Absolutely. It's ten percent. Yeah, it's a maximum yeah, so ten percent. The impact not, study is going to even be less. So why burden the, the the state's economy and image? And if it doesn't crack the nut. The gantries are up. You spent $45 million on it. Guess who they're going to come to to make them worthwhile? You and me driving our, our <laughs> and, cars. And my, my whole um, you know, argument, again, though, has been also the way we actually move about. You know, how do we move about in the state of Rhode Island? What's our mobility, our flexibility, all of these things? You know, I look at how just tolls in general, just the comment of, or, or the word toll, I mean, that's so passe. How can you not have things that already, you know, fun? Well, give me the ten second. What, give me the hint because we want to talk about new technology sure. and blockchain. What is, what is the new transportation mode you want to talk about? Well, I think Maybe that things, Well, mm -hmm. the things that are going to happen Witched. are. Listen, there's going to be much more of the pod type situation that's going to happen. What's we're going to get. We're going to get. We're going to. We're going to be moving as units. You know, I go to San Francisco. If I'm going to somewhere, right? I don't just call Uber. I call the Uber that shows up and it's taking three, four of us somewhere. It's dropping you off where you need to be. It's dropping me off to the next place. And that's just going to expand both in scope and, you know, again, flexibility, how fast. You know, I believe we'll be in, in Boston in 30 minutes, you know, in the future. It's not going to By be what it rail? is. Or sure, uh -huh. you know, I would have, again, defaulted to that. I would have said high speed. But, uh, you know, you look back and things move so fast that you have to believe something else is coming, right? So when you see the Elon Musk going on below ground and shooting us there. You see above ground, uh, listen, what was a drone, uh, limited drone just a few years ago, you're seeing, if you spend any time online, you're seeing drone taxis now that carry four, five, six people getting ready to be deployed. All right, so how about know? some new age currency when we come back, stay with us. <laughs> All right, I don't know if you got a big screen TV, you can see uh, Giovanni Ferrosi more or less uh, trying to hand it to me the other day on the radio, which is good. You know, I'd rather, you know, I, confrontation is healthy, by the way. <laughs> just want everybody to know that. Uh, other candidates seem to want to just hide under a table when I say, hey, I don't like their ideas. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't not like your idea. 
you, you, uh, what was the thing you did last week at the 1049? Was that a formal campaign announcement? It doesn't have the balloons yet. You need the balloons. <laughs> when, when did the balloons no, come? Uh, well, those are May 20th. May 20th. Okay. Uh, that'll be at the, the kids' the, birthdays uh, and everything the campaign else. Campaign headquarters. Right? We're going to do it right there. Your birthday. My May birthday. 20th. We're going to have right, it. Send cards, um, letters. You know, <laughs> cash. <laughs> political campaigns, right? Uh, listen, you're going to be frustrated because we only have a few minutes for this. Sure. But this blockchain idea you have. You want us to become a leader in, in a new Bitcoin currency, and you think that's going, right? No, not, in, a, in a blockchain, not, in, uh, not, blockchain foundation. In, 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 a, in, a, yeah. in a, the culture. As the Internet was something nobody knew about, blockchain uh, currency uh, will be something that nobody knew about. And then, oh, um, my premise is you can't run a campaign on something that nobody gets when you're trying to dig yourself into into a place. So, have at it. Well, this I don't is, argue this the is, premise. Yeah, I just don't, I think is, the timing of this is just awkward and strange. Well, you know, you have to understand why I'm running. So I'm running to change Rhode Island. I'm not running for me. You know, I, it's funny, when I see some of the uh, responses when um, other potential people are running or, or questions, they're always like, well, I have to see what's, you know, what's best for me or best for my situation or best for my family or best. What do you mean? <laughs> you know, you need to run for what's best for Rhode Island. And I, it's funny, I said that to my kids. I was, I was taking them to school this morning. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa relax, relax. Because you know, I'm, I'm like, it's not about you guys. <laughs> you know, it's not about them. It's not about my family. Who cares? I mean, yeah, they're going to benefit from a great environment. They're going to benefit from a wonderful Rhode Island. And so to speak about the blockchain, the bottom line is the Internet is the Internet. No one knows how the Internet works. You put information on it. It just moves information from me to you. But, you know, ultimately there were businesses that were grew, and they grew both in areas like a Silicon Valley and in pockets throughout the U.S. that housed different components that supported the Internet. And then there were businesses that sat on top of them. And there's also ways that we now transmit and pay for things online. Mm. And you push buttons and you click things and things get paid. But there's a third and party so, that verifies the transactions. Yeah, you, so, want, you want to move blockchain technology into the conversation because it eliminates a third party. It eliminates a lot of things, but more importantly, there's a quote that I saw that made sense to me. Any business can get disrupted or anything can get disrupted if you have a more trusted version of itself. And so what blockchain does is it allows for information, instead of it being on a cell phone or on a computer, it's going to be on multiple computers at once. And for something to be valid, everybody has to say, yes, I have the same exact information. So it's the base. The currency you hear of and where the, the real kind of uh, people get lost is you hear about Bitcoin. Bitcoin's one currency. That's like saying the euro. Or it's saying the yen. It's gotcha. like saying a Visa, Amex. Yeah. It's I how got you actually seconds. take it. Tell me, tell me how much of this is going to this conversation is going to be prominent in your campaign. Well, it's going to be huge because it's going to change Rhode Island forever. If you look at the 1981 Financial Services Act in Delaware, where they actually created a home for corporations to go and register, it created a new way for revenue to be collected. So they roughly get, they get roughly almost a billion dollars a year in revenue just because it's Delaware. Are you going to have Delaware. placards out there actually frozy blockchain elect me? That's my point. That's Rhode my Island question. will be the hub for blockchain, uh, blockchain if I get elected and it will create economies from education to the actual foundations of business and it'll be the home of blockchain and we will have a whole economy built on that we'll have, and we'll save a billion and a half dollars on top of it. We'll that. have more on this but you can go to our website at, six, at uh, foxprovince.com link to uh, Gio's idea on blockchain Thank you. so you can read it. Good to see you man. Nice to see you too. Last word next. Charlene Lima the rep on tasers tomorrow night. Gotta go. Thanks.